Hey guys. Right, so let's start. So welcome to Code Harbour. Um, thanks for coming. And as I've just said, obviously the events are recorded. Uh, so our first talk is KO Digital's Head of Digital Marketing, Harry Dance. He's going to be telling us, uh, he's going to be telling us, <laughs> he's going to talk for us on our web developer's guide to SEO. So away you go. Cool. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, give me a second as I share my screen. Cool. Give us a shout when you can see it. I say give us a shout. Everyone is muted, so Glenn is nodding his head, so I will take that. Yeah, cool. Well. All right. Um, yeah, so basically today I'll be speaking about um, web development and SEO. Um, I'm not a developer myself, so actually a lot of this is um, probably black magic to most people in my industry. Um, at the end of the day, we need to work together to be able to help our clients' websites grow and develop, and that's kind of where this has come from. So very quick uh, breakdown. Uh, who are Care Digital? We're a leading technical agency based in Ken. We do really uh, software, websites, digital marketing, and apps. Uh, very brief understanding. We kind of work in the SME market, and uh, I would say we're probably erring more nerds than most companies. And I'll say that in a very positive fashion because actually we rely on evidence rather than assumptions and kind of like the more fluff that probably, and this is coming from someone who is marketing marketeers get associated to. So let's ignore that. So SEO, what do people call it really? And I say developers, what do you define it as? You probably call it fluff. Uh, those annoying people that send you an email saying, actually, can I have a H1? Why is there too many H1s? Uh, actually, can you remove that please? I think there is a natural ability for web developers and SEO not to get on similar to architects and builders or quantities uh, civil engineers all those kind of things but actually we're both working for the same kind of role here and what do seo people what do we call it we probably call it hacking the web and poor man's developers probably what i'll call it but uh if we go on from there so why should seo and developers work together well something along the lines of insert inspirational comment about if a tree falls in a forest if a website doesn't have anyone coming blah 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 kind of yeah let's start from there so i'm waiting for applause for this because this is my biggest quote it's hard one. Oh, alex you bloody jumped the gun please accept <laughs> me please someone alex yes i knew it would be you so and i can accept that so thank you very much really because this i was happily waiting for 10 minutes on this one um so yeah Thank you, like I said. So actually, let's break it quickly down. Um, I've kind of put this into two brackets here, the more understandable stuff, and by that I mean stuff that is actually, let's call it the easier things to understand on SEO elements, that's robot text. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times a website has come to me and has been completely disallowed. So I've even had a client approach me and say, Harry, can you help us? We've just had this website built. It's not appearing search as I want it to it'd been disallowed. So in theory, it was never going to appear in search. Uh, four or four pages, page structure, canonicalization, inclusion, XML sitemap, all these things are actually standard practice in development. But I say all of them, some like canonicalization probably isn't, but these are the norms, to be fair, for most websites built these days. And the reason that is, is because actually it creates a good website experience for the user. Four or four pages, if someone can't find a page and goes to the wrong pages, brilliant, have a four or four, put them right on the right track, alt text within images. Actually, that's good for accessibility. Like if there's no alt text, then people with screen readers can't read it. Then there's the black magic stuff. Um, these are the areas that actually some SEOs can talk about it, some can't, but these are real areas that actually we need developers. Um, so this is e-commerce tracking. So Google Analytics, making sure those layered kind of loads help. Defer off screen scripts, make sure they're compressed. Defer off screen images for the, like the, the need for speed. And yeah, the server. God, I don't know how to work a server to be honest, but being able to have someone to support those. And again, the server is really for that speed is something that is fundamentally um, are needed in our career. 
I should say as well, I appreciate if people have got questions, I will look at them and I'll try and say them afterwards, um, if that's all right. But quick history. So probably SEO started as a webmaster. There's no such thing as SEO originally. Let's be honest here. It quickly became a person who was almost a cold caller. Uh, someone who could just shove a meta tag in, just say, do you want to be on page one? Or buy backlinks, go on to Fiverr, buy hundreds and hundreds of backlinks to get you up there. And then actually, this is what people did. They added, have naughty pictures of Britney Spears in the, in the meta code. Doesn't have to on the page. Let's just appear for that. I'm not even joking. I had one of my, uh, is he a client? No, not a client, luckily. Uh, this year asked, could they do stuff like this in their website? Add like, naked photos of Britney Spears, et cetera, in the back end, so people would appear on their site. And then all these kind of tricks that were incorporated, what made us look like spam, luckily, and luckily is the keyword search engines, Bing, Google, whoever you kind of consider, let's be honest, we only consider two, and they're the ones, um, have made it a lot harder to do stupid things like that. And because of that, that kind of, um, that Venn diagram of developers and SEO have started to join together because, there's a real technical aspect to SEO these days, and that needs to be utilized and accepted by developers as developers incorporate SEO into their practice and SEO incorporate developers into their practice. So real brief history, that's just a quick understanding of what we're focusing on in general, but this will be about technical SEO and on-page SEO. So I got past all that rambling. So this is really the takeaway points. I've kind of set the next kind of five, 10 minutes as the real takeaway points. And uh, I'm sure Alex will share this with you guys later. Happy to share and you'll get the video. So this is just a general website. What does an SEO person want? Let's make this all editable. And by that, I mean um, one H1. I mean the H2's been editable, uh, paragraphs, content, Meta keywords actually don't, it just don't include them. Meta description, uh, page title, the ability to add alt text to images, just make it editable. I appreciate that some people have their own CMSs and this needs to be incorporated, but there shouldn't really be an excuse not to make these editable these days, bar the framework uh, and the design of the page itself. So yeah, make H2s. Um, there should only be one H1, reason being, like a book, there's only one pay, There's only one title of a book. Um, accessibility, it, ignore the SEO element of it. Screen readers will pick that element up first and define it as the page and almost start looking at accessibility and SEO as the same difference. P tags, yep, fine. And actually something that's a little bit more technical, use markup, Jason LD is brilliant. Um, and by that, I mean, Google incorporates it, Bing has incorporated it within their kind of algorithm as well. And it enables you to um, first define what the page is about. Second, it allows those search engines to uh, allow a little bit more structured data throughout the SERPs itself. So that could be star ratings within it. That could be um, FAQ questions, all these items that can be incorporated. There's tons of places to go. And there's, to be fair, there's some generators out there, as you can see here. But it's not just about the page, it's about the URL as well. So again, quite a lot of this is common sense, but please make the URLs descriptive. Um, the URLs are read as well by the search engines. The slugs of them are incorporated within the algorithm to understand because if you use a parameter, um, yes, you can cache it. Um, yes, it can be understand, but they're rarely descriptive. Um, use subfolders, not subdomains if you can. Reason being, this is a big argument, a boring argument, but actually the authority that um, a brand incorporates, um, it is easier transferred to subfolders, not subdomains. And the reason that is, a subdomain is a separate website to kind of search engines and that authority you incorporate within the kind of, uh, the awareness that you have online and all those other kind of elements that really allow you to grow your website. You don't want to share it between websites, that's for you only. And keep the URL short, and that's actually user experience and for SEO. And 
touching upon what I did earlier with accessibility. Um, accessibility user experience are key areas to incorporate because actually you do a lot of that right and you kind of mirror SEO. And no duplication. And by duplication, I, I can mean anything. I could mean um, different parameters for different types of socks in case you've got e-commerce uh, websites that could be uh, red socks, but let's change them to blue. Yes, you've got a different page, same product. Um, that could mean uh, www.planeteat.com or just planeteat.com. Actually, make sure there's only one version of the page. Um, reason being, it probably isn't as an SEO issue as it used to be, but there are benefits to it. And for the user experience, again, there's some real benefits to it. And no underscores either. That's back to user experience and to the way like uh, the bots can crawl the URLs. And please, please don't put distinguish your information into the URL. Uh, that could be anything. That could be your password. I've seen uh, people incorporate personal details into parameters that are incorporated within the URL once something, when somebody completes something. Because actually, first, let's be honest here, if that gets cached, that is awful. Second, if someone's using Google Analytics or some, a tool like that, that will be incorporated within Google Analytics. Again, that is a GDPR big no-no. So moving on to meta tags, the stuff in the background. Again, same as the page structure. Keep it easy, make it editable. Um, there must be one title element on each page. I'm gonna use that book reference again. If you've got a book title, there should only be one. Meta description. Actually, these don't have an effect on SEO, um, as people say, but they do have an effect on click-through rate. If you write something that is engaging, and something that really incorporates um, what you're trying to sell on the page. And there used to be a 70s advertising acronym FAB, features, advantages, benefits, and add a call to action at the end of it. And then you're really able to actually encourage people to come onto the website. And there's a couple of studies out there that show that um, the way people engage with the website and um, actually the, the load time, et cetera, um, is beneficial for SEO. So in theory, it's got a secondary effect of SEO because if you write something engaging, people come to the website and engage, potentially yeah, you will appear higher, but um, it's a little bit of a blurred one, but again, it's something that we'd want to incorporate. And no meta keywords. I touched upon this earlier. Meta keywords are incorporated with nearly every CMS. Uh, Bing, and I appreciate that only 10% of people in the UK use Bing, and to be honest, Let's be honest, probably the biggest search term in Bing is Google, but Bing has openly said meta keywords don't work. Um, Google has never said that, but I removed it from a client's website, I think five months ago and their traffic went up by 20%. And that was by removing every one of their uh, meta keywords on 500 pages. So albeit there's been no actual uh, voiced uh, kind of push against it. Yes, please do remove it images so back to alt text really um yeah let's do this they should be included for accessibility um and it allows the robots to actually crawl the page and understand what those images about make sure the alt text is related to the page fine one plus one equals three there because every element on the page including the alt tags including the h1 the page title is all talking about the same thing that makes it indistinguishable. oh my god i can't speak right now that makes sure that you know exactly what that page is about compress images um i've touched upon server load and all that malarkey need for speed to be honest compress them make sure they load quickly and again reflecting that defer images uh, because the quicker website is the better user experience and actually the better user experience the better for SEO and for let's be honest engaging the audience on the website and serve images in the next gen format this is something we have tried at care digital um, and actually something that has worked um, is not something that we have widely used yet and it's something we've been testing with uh, with our own CMS but again these are being pushed on people and because of that it's you don't want that nausea or nauseating SEO individual 
coming to you saying, actually, can we get this done? Because um, you had never incorporated it before. And again, most of these elements will reflect what people are using for the website and speed. And I've already touched upon this, but speed, I'm going to say it too many times. Uh, compress CSS and JavaScript, brilliant. Do something sexy to the server. I'm not going to tell you how to do it because let's be honest here, um, I would be wrong very quickly. And defer third party plugins if applicable. And WordPress is awful with this talking about plugins. I appreciate these are slightly different, but if you can hard code it in, please do. Um, or incorporating it with an actual build without using plugins because plugins do slow stuff very quickly. And this is not just me saying this. Uh, so Google Lighthouse, everyone uses it. Google Lighthouse will honestly tell you exactly where you are slow and where you could uh, improve. And straight away, that's not coming from an SEO element. That's coming from someone from Google, well, someone from the Google software. And the reason that is important at this point, because actually don't be surprised when an SEO executive, SEO manager, whatever, just takes that Google Lighthouse report and sends it to you because it is something that is continually happening. And then you have to be in the position where you go, okay, that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. It, make sure this is baked in straight away so you don't have to row back on yourself. Oh, it's not changing screen. Cool, there we go. Um, and we're coming to the final aspects of this, robot text and XML sitemap. Um, please do include the XML sitemap within the robot text. That's just a kind of best practice. Um, please don't disallow the website again. I, albeit my client was very happy that we got them into search results that quickly. Uh, disallowing a website is awful. And including XML sitemap or ask us to generate you. I think I left that in from our own personal one with Care Digital so we can ignore that part, but please don't all ask me to create XML sitemaps after this. It will only end in tears for myself, but yeah, always include one and that allows the robot text in any search engine to actually understand how your website is structured. And finally, 301 redirects, not 302, 302 are temporary. Tracking to be added, especially e-commerce. Yep, mentioned that already. Engineer away thin content. Uh, thin content is poor. The more thin content you go on the website, the more likely you're actually be penalized by a Google algorithm. And that's just for poor content. Um, Google doesn't want or Bing um, to actually websites to appear when they've got nothing to actually give to the user. So engineer away that could be with design or um, limits on how little content you can put on it. Again, four or four pages are great. And add a security layer if you can, because um, no one likes seeing in the Chrome bar like unsafe content. And actually, SEO, web development, accessibility UX is all for the people who use it. So yeah, I believe that is the final-ish part because I've got a little bit of a quiz after this, if that's all right. Um, I appreciate that we're not doing this. Everyone's muted, but if you have a pen and paper or a notepad, I don't mind. We can quickly do this. I'm up for that. Cool. It's not very good. Don't get me wrong. Here we go. So quiz time. Google spiders can crawl images. True or false? I'll go through this quickly because it's not that exciting. Which of these are not a real SEO tool? Um, Screaming Frog, Majestic, Ahrefs, or Salt Bay? Meta T words are great. True or false? Uh, trying to make this easier and trying to incorporate what I've spoken about. Which of these are not a search engine? Yandex, Alpha P, YouTube, DuckDuckGo. What does Google index first? Desktop or mobile? Was well, recently been announced that helps SEO. Quicker website equals higher rankings. More social enga engagement, higher rankings, or video on a website equals higher rankings. And April the 4th represents what type of page? And that is me done. And I'll quickly go through the answers. Um, there's no awards. Uh, yep, that's true. Uh, Salt Bay. Oh, false, awful. Please don't incorporate them. 
Alpha P, YouTube is actually the second biggest search engine in the world. And it's a terrifying fact, something people should be aware of. Uh, mobile first these days, as people have incorporated mobile into their life more and more, Google's indexing mobile first. So even when you're designing something or developing something, in theory, you should be focusing on mobile first in most industries, but it's judged on how historically people have used that website before. If you're working in, let's say, a house clearance industry, yeah, uh, mobile first. If you're working in something towards solicitors, they generally use desktop, so focus on that. And quicker websites, and the reason being, people engage with better, better user experience appears higher. And a 404 page, and that is a poor joke to finish on. Yeah, that is me done. Uh, thank you all, and if you have any questions, I will try and find them now. Um, hey, yeah, uh, I did put a question in here, <laughs> and you could probably cool. see from it that we've kind of been answered. But I wondered if you could sort of, yeah, do you is that would you say that's a good exam? That's a good uh, definition of what canonization is. I haven't heard of it before. Canonization. Yeah. What What is it? Oh, sorry. So basically, um, basically, canonicalization is the process of putting a little bit of uh, code, a canonical tag. And basically what it says is, so if you've got seven different versions of one page, let's say, and the reason that is, is because, uh, let's go back to the socks example, different types of socks, but it's actually the same brand, HJ socks, let's say. Uh, all same description, the only difference is color. A canonical link is associated to every one of those pages, but on the main page you want to associate it to you, you basically say these seven pages, this is what they're representing. This is the page, it, this is the main page. Okay. How if that you, makes sense. Yeah, how so, do you do that though? Is that with... Um... Very, it's literally a one line of code that just says, um, it, you could even do it in theory if you've got five news pages you know, just kind of the generic, like one, two, three, four, page four, page three. If you just basically say number one is the main page we want to index in Google, um, there's a few versions. Let me quickly, because I don't know the code off the top of my head. I don't That's know fine, if you can- I'll it up later. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but basically, yeah, it is a way of just putting a little bit of code that says, actually, this is the page we want associated. This is the main page. These are just variations of that page. Okay. And that stops the duplication because actually you don't have five, six versions of the same page. You're saying these are versions of this page, but this is the main one. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I've uh, got one other question, if that's okay, and then I'll let yeah. everyone else have yeah, 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 no, cool. Um, it was just because it's more of a clarification. And um, you said that um, about people accidentally putting their personal information in the URLs. Um, yes. I just wondered, is that because people are using, are basically doing it as a get rather than a post or is there another way? Because I've, I've not, ever, that's the only way I know of somebody been able to do that. Yeah. The, oh. So actually one, the last time I saw it was they basically used um, email marketing. Uh, they used like an almost a UTM code uh, that created that allowed uh, those parameters to be incorporated on the URL for tracking purposes. Uh, so it was almost the um, uh, question mark equals Harry Dance because they wanted through that MailChimp, uh, MailChimp at the time, they wanted to make the tracking available. But because of that, all that data went into Google Analytics. So yes, they could see um, from Harry Dance had clicked, but also that had been stored in Google Analytics as well. Right, okay. And that goes first against GDPR and against Google's policy. So there was a point where you were going, okay, you're going, potentially you could lose all your data now. Yeah. Is that, that something sense. that MailChimp has fixed since? Or is that something that people have to be careful That about? That wasn't something MailChimp, that was something they had done. Basically, they had added that to a code in MailChimp. Oh, I see. Okay. But um, I've seen it a couple of times on... Uh, I'm trying to think of an example, someone completing a form that moved them to the next stage almost. And then actually they had incorporated a, a name, I think, in the URL. I don't know why they did it. It was really bad development. And again, I'm going to, I'm not a very technical person, but yeah, you see elements like that and you're like, oh, this is not for me. I hope that helped. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you.
Uh, now I'm going to stop talking. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Uh, if you want to put them in the chat or... Oh, chat I've just learned how to use the chat, talking about not technical. I didn't know you could open it like that. Cool. Yes, yeah, so you'll uh, see where we're having a little conversation about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nicolization, nice. Yeah, that, that made me chuckle, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, cool. someone's saying that it can, does Canonical replace no opener? I've not heard of that. Uh, Is that... No. They're, they're, uh, actually, um, doesn't replace. I think they are just they are just different, naturally. Um, it's to be yeah, I don't haven't she's used now, but but Canonical is kind of like that that element that is wildly not used but is very important, even if you just cannot canonicalize if it's only got one version of that page just put that page in it you can have just that canonical link just in case uh, in the future there are different versions of that page by accident and again that could be through uh, parameters that could be for anything it's just normal best practice is to have one in there okay um is there any other questions I don't actually have a question, but I have a statement. Um, so you mentioned in one of the latest slides that um, SSL, if you can, I think is the way you phrased it. Yep. I would say, being the, uh, the security elephant in the room, <laughs> I'd say always use SSL. Yes. Uh, it, it is. I mean, the reason why Chrome um, does flag it now is is because it is an insecure protocol uh, using um, not using SSL or TSL, TLS, I should say. TLS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, as I said, if you can, is more because if the client sometimes like pays, if that makes sense. I appreciate that some hosting company or not hosting, some companies like web development companies will make will charge a client, let's say X amount to add the SSL. So I always try and push the client down it first for the security, like you said, and second, um, well, there's no there's no negatives to it actually, bar potentially web load is a little bit slower. But um, that is minimal. It is minimal, yeah. Uh, was why are there so many links who advise using meta keys? Um, by meta keys, we talk about meta keywords. I assume. Uh, I don't know. To be honest, if it's meta keys, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they are negative. You can, uh, you can Bing. You can Google. Uh, whatever you want, you can search, do meta keywords, um, have a positive impact on SEO. In Bing, they will openly say no. On Google, there's a bit of a, uh, we don't really have an answer to that, but it's meta title, meta description. Yes, they're positive. Meta keywords, no, they're, they are not good. And it is, but to be honest, it's because of spammy SEO individuals like me that wrote Naked Britney Spears and like 40 different elements of that actually. They're the reason they got in, taken away because, yeah, people take advantage of it. Cool. Um, I think, is there any more questions? And I will. Sorry, I was, I was reading about meta keywords. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've just nice. found, I found just found exactly what you said it's it looks like it's a quite a recent because when I originally looked it was saying yeah do it but I then put in 2020 so I think it's been in the last year it's changed and it's like you said it's just doesn't really do anything yeah it's I, I will, uh... yeah obviously if anyone else finds anything else during the break and wants to send the links feel free but it does yeah, I think there is some debate on it, but it does seem like it's not as yeah, needed compared to I, anything else. I do it for client, like I said, uh, I was going to show you, but I'm not, uh, potentially that's not a good idea showing my client data. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> literally, yeah, removing it from one of my clients and their traffic increased by 20%. It's, it is, yeah. It's one of the things that it will always be debated and there's black cat SEO, there's SEO people that will kind of push things, but I always remove them and, it, and it's never been negative for me. It's only been positive and that's from experience and a little bit of reading, but yeah, um, I think if anyone, here, so I say, if anyone here has actually had like, positive experiences, feel free to write it in the chat and we'll have a look. I'll have a look at it later. Um, Cause I'll be really curious to see what experiences people have had with it. 
Um, yeah. I think anyway, I'll stop derailing. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. I think, well, I said we're like an evidence-based agency and the reason being just trial everything. Just have a go at it, to be honest. If it, if it breaks something, yeah, probably not great, but at least you've learned. Like, that's yeah. the thing. But I was going to say, actually, the, the first thing you said about... Um, one of your clients forgetting to put the, the, yeah, put, set the robots, uh, not the robots. Yeah, the robots robot. text. I did the exact same thing on one of my first websites. So I said, <laughs> yeah. why, is my, why, why is my sign at work? And looked at it and went, oh, I think it's because I was deving it. So I purposely, when I dev'd it, had it as on follow so that yeah. it would sort and then just completely forgot to take that's it. An, that's <laughs> the main reason. And then like, get it to crawl it quickly so she could have it. So it's, that, it's like when yeah. you start, like, it sounds stupid, but it's, it's really obvious. It's easy done for, and the, I only found this out like, two months ago there's an area in wordpress that i can't remember exactly where settings or something settings and there's just a box just saying uh, a little tick box saying do you want to appear in search yeah does it do anything i don't think it does it doesn't seem to work for me if if, or you don't want to appear if you it was ticked with one of my clients and it had disallowed everything like it had, it was one of those things that uh, it took us ages because we were looking at the robot text file naturally. We thought maybe it's been incorporated by SEO Yoast or something like that, or someone had actually done it um, externally. But no, um, it ended up just being that little tick box. <laughs> so I think laughing and learning, but it is an easy thing to do. But it's yeah. one of those things, as soon as you do it, it's oh, horrific you to explain it. to a client. The first thing to check the next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Cool. Should I stop sharing my screen? So. Uh, yes. So uh, looks like that's all the questions we've got. Um, cool. So, okay. So okay. I think we will stop there. Uh, cool. So thank you. No, thank you all for actually listening and dealing yeah. with me. But thank you. Oh, it feels really annoying not having everyone clapping at the same time. I might put laugh tra- a clap track on in the background next time. A really big laughs if all right as well. <laughs> really. <laughs> Right, uh, so I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, But yeah, we're going to take a break for 15 minutes and we're back on eight o'clock with Glenn. Cool. So see you on a bit. See you in a minute.